away. Mark! Let oh, me can hear guys. all first 30 seconds anyway. Thank God, you should have heard that. It was like a... Mark. Terrible. Ignore him. Terrible. You could fill a bottle with that. So disgusting. Streamyard. God, look at him. Hey, morning, guys. How are we all? Fuck it. There's no news, but I don't want to talk about it. So, see you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, news is so boring today. Well, let me give you a snapshot. I'll give you a snapshot. Millions warned of power cuts. We thought, we don't want to talk about that. We well, don't want to depress ourselves with that on Monday. But Nadia, with a producer's head on, had a very good idea that we could, we could get nostalgic about... Power cuts. I don't remember one. I was too young. Ah, oh, okay. So that would have... Do you remember a few years ago we had a power cut and, and the girls couldn't oh, have yeah. internet and Kiki Maddie said it was the best day of her life. Yeah, as soon as they had all tech removed from them, they it they loved it. It was really interesting. So yeah. we were gonna do fond memories of power cuts, but that, that bit the dust. Then we thought, well, we only talked about Imperial Measures on the members area oh, yesterday. Can't be bothered. And then we thought, fuck Boris <laughs> and his Imperial Measures. Gaslighting. We didn't want to talk about that. And every radio station Morning, has Tim. dedicated hours to the quite oh. clear again, them just trying to distract everybody from what they're actually doing. And they've done it with weights and measures. They need a medal. They, they well, they, I don't know if, the, yeah, as long as it's a four inch medal, it uh -huh. doesn't matter. Happy Bernie, it was your birthday on Wednesday and. It was your birthday on when was it on Wednesday? No, on the twenty sixth. Please, can you give me a happy birthday? Of course, we will do the, all the birthdays at the end. We're we'll singing, and we birthday. promise we won't sign off before we you do. You remind them. us. Yeah, we did come back on and do them, but we won't sign off. Uh, Angela Rayner was amazing. <sighs> Somebody just asked, "What was Angela Rayner like?" Amazing. I want her to be the leader of the Labour Party. Did you say she watches Coffee Moaning? Her her team that were with her watch Coffee Moaning. Shit, I better not do. I not do Keir Starmer again, <laughs> Keir Starmer. Oh, I loved her. <laughs> loved her RM jams. Loved her. Um, Tim, don't worry, mate. You'll be fine. A day at a time. A day at a time. A day at a time. Um, so we were going to we were going to do uh, imperial measures. We were going to do I said power no. cuts. We were going to do music festivals will super spread monkeypox. And we but, thought that was too depressing. Well, and also the WHO yesterday said we've hit the we've hit the top. No, 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 they didn't. <laughs> I thought oh, they hang said, on a minute. No, I get what you're saying. No, the WHO. I, this shows well, you. I read the headline last night, and I thought the headline said we've reached the peak, but I realise what they've just said. We've just hit the tip of the iceberg. Oh, so the complete opposite. So that's not a good thing, right. is it? So we didn't think we'd talk about monkeypox. So we box. thought we'd avoid that. Because we thought we're feeling a bit fragile. We did And think... we just sort of tuned into you guys and thought, I don't think they want to talk about monkeypox either. No. Um, what we did, Johnny Depp, Nadia sent me this. Johnny Depp stuns Sheffield concert goers with a surprise performance with Jeff, Jeff Beck. Beck. And Jeff a, Beck is a friend of Lisa. I was going to say, Lisa know, and, oh. and Carl know Jeff Beck very well. There he is on stage. He obviously, uh, whilst the jury's out deliberating, no no Johnny Depp trial today. It's uh, Memorial week, Weekend in America. Um, but we will probably get the verdict tomorrow. And they are not going to be in the court. They're not going to be in the court. They're not going to be in the court for the, for the reading, for the verdict. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, so that was kind of it, really. Wasn't it? That was it. So we thought, did we guess right? Did we guess right? Did you not really want to Me talk too. about Me too. Monkeypox won't turn into a pandemic or even remotely anything like that for the simple reason that it requires very close contact and people are now aware. And we have vaccines. We have vaccines. I suppose you could have said the same thing about HIV, though. That required close contact, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I shouldn't have thrown that thought in there because now it's confused things. Um, so, yeah, so Johnny... De and, and pretty much that, that's oh, about it. Oh, look at that, Mark. Did you see that? Did you guys see someone zoomed into the notes that Amber Heard makes? It was random calculations of something about who's the number one. Who's the number one what? In the, maybe in the, in the moment of the, the, the debate. I think she was just writing nervously. It's like sometimes when you're in a, in a business meeting, and some, you know, some people are kind yeah, of writing. Yeah, I, I would do that the whole time. You would write? I would just squiggle, I would doodle, just to not, just to not, oh, it was very embarrassing, the whole thing. For but one of the, one of the, I don't know if you, well, obviously. You exactly, me too. A HIV was a novel no, virus, no, this is not a novel virus. She, the, the most common thing that she would do, 
she would write something on a post-it note and she'd lean back and she'd do that. And I was saying, and she'd panned it out of shot. And I was saying on one of the lives, wouldn't it be funny if the camera just panned to the right and there's a man completely covered in post-it notes? Yeah, like that'd a, be so Like funny. a Michelin man. But just, just skip you, that. You could do a meme, couldn't you, of her constantly doing that? And it's just like, oh, 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 that's a good meme. That's a good meme. That's a good meme. That's now, good meme. I think... I think we've gauged it right. I can see people are going, yeah, we don't want to think about it. We don't want to think about it. Yeah, I don't want to think about it. See ya. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye. I'm out. Oh, it's lovely, the smell of it, Linda Fist. Yeah, Peter Andre had it on. So Linda was talking about the new Eau Sauvage, Christian Dior, Johnny Depp perfume. Oh my God, it was divine. Because Peter Andre was sitting next to us, we were like, what the hell is that? It's very nice, it's the brand new one. Uh, no, Wonder Woman, I don't own my own bread maker. It would be a disaster if I owned my bread, own bread maker because I'm obsessed with bread. I would just be baking bread and eating it, baking bread and eating it. So I'm staying, staying well away from having my own bread maker. My mum has one, my mum makes her own bread every, every day. 88 years old and still making her own bread every day. Uh, I am going to be cooking something for the Jubilee RM Jams. I am. Uh, I'm going to put something on my Instagram. But also, I'm going to, on actual, the Sunday, we are doing a live No Name Sunday show. So we'll also be doing that. Where I'll do that sort of food. Uh, the smell of baking bread is probably second to none. Baking bread... Uh, bacon. Slow cooking onions, bacon, chopped grass. I love the smell of. I think that's my favourite smell. Or forests. Forests. I love, I forests. love a pine forest. Me Why too. are they smelling? So if you said something there, we went off on one. The post it note person will be revealed tomorrow too. The person will be covered with all kinds of coloured post it notes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there is, a, there is a meme with the post it notes. Is there? Rosie Canty on, of course. Everyone's so fast, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so I have 15 kilograms of bread flour from Shipton Mill to use up. Can't beat hot bread. Oh, smells in the so milk. dangerous. Hi, Spain, Ollie Cat. Um, I've, actually, I was on Instagram the other day. I was looking around um, Margate. I like Margate. And, um, oh my God, Mark, I found the most amazing bakers. Yeah. Next time we're in Margate, we have to go and check it out. Looking forward to that. Proper old-fashioned bakers with this flour on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. And they only have as many as they have. Yeah. And they fry the donuts themselves. Love all that. Someone just I asked... really want to do a series where we go around and find those lovely places so for YouTube. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Let's do it. Mm. They should commission a new food to be created for the Jubilee like they did with Coronation Chicken. A new dish. That's got a nice idea. Well, a coronation Chicken. I'd forgotten about Coronation Chicken. Yeah. That's that one with raisins, isn't it? <laughs> it does have raisins. No, it doesn't. It does. It doesn't Coron grow Sultanas, you can put sultanas. But sultanas, yeah. Can, it isn't sultanas. Just the a... mayonnaise and the curry powder is so good. Um, I think if you ask Ian, I'm not quite ready to do a piano duet with Sky, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, and that's been, been a bit of a struggle to squeeze it in, hasn't it? Ian? Good morning. Morning, Lee. Lee. How join, are that? Please join. Jo Lee has started up a mailing I'm list. Excited. We've joined. My mum joined yesterday, I think. And um, so join him. Go to his Instagram, Lee P E A R T. It's Lee Peart, and uh, his link will be there. And um, join his mailing list. I think it will be fun. I think you'll get all sorts of interesting and fun information on it. Yeah. Um, I'm bloody starving. Actually, I've had a bit of a weird weekend with food. Yeah. And that, body stuff. We were going to talk about that. So we thought we? we'd talk about that. I've had a weird weekend too, where I covertly Welcome ate a Keely. caramel bar. Can you put Keely so I can do a welcome song to to members area? She's joined the members area. Keely, I thought it was Petunia. No, but no, but there's another person. Oh, Keely. is there? No, no, sorry. Petunia. No, but Keely has already joined. Oh, I see. So sorry. She just oh, joined. oh, okay. Sorry, Keely. Leo's having a fry up. Um, yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a. Talk through your weekend, your body issues weekend. Uh, well, it pivoted around food. Um, I, I've done about six weeks of over 100,000 steps. Then this last week, which was very busy, I only managed to do 60 or 50,000 steps. So immediately the stinking thinking voice in my head said, you failed. 
Right. And so as Even I Even though you'd been massively overachieving in the first place. Exactly. So yeah. I, this is how it works, though, isn't it? And so the dysmorphic, dysmorphic voice in my head said, you're hitting the weekend, you've worked hard, you've failed on your steps. Indulge. So I had. Well, because each time the, I. Oh, let me no, but let me just stop you there. So was it like because I because I have failed, yeah. I'm going to throw everything. I'm going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Pretty much. And just take the wheels off and just do yeah. whatever. But I yeah. did. I didn't do but that didn't as much that. as I did in the past. Yeah. But I did, as in I did. Um, I did eat a caramel bar twice on two different occasions when I went to the shop to get things. You had two caramel bars. Yeah, at two different times, not both Do at the same time. Do you think? Covert, okay. Covertly. Right. So that's interesting, isn't it? And it was important actually it was nothing, under cloud cover. There's actually nothing wrong with having two caramel bars at the no. weekend. Right? So let's take the criminality out of that. Okay. But why did you think you had to hide it? Who were you hiding it from? I was hoping that because it was under cover of darkness at night, I was hiding it from myself. But do you think that makes you feel worse? Do you have that, guys, where you, where you hide what you eat? Good Chip Lollipop had a whole Easter egg in bed last God, it night. It must have been stale by now. Wow. I had three Snickers yesterday. Feel a bit guilty, guilty now. now. Yeah. Me too. Two caramel bars, some hours apart. That's fine. Yeah. But I It didn't would feel say, right, though. Isn't that a weird that, thing? Yeah. Is that everything is fine. Okay. Because I think... At the root of all of our fuck-ups around food, if you're fucked up about food, is this constant oscillating between I've been good, I've been bad, I've been good, I've been bad, I've been good, I've been bad. And it is just about, because I was in the same place, I had a Chinese, oh God, I really enjoyed that chai. It was so delicious. That was another part of the whole demise. Yeah. Was having had a really nice Chinese. It felt bad. It felt wrong. See, it felt bad, but you can't remember the last time you had a Chinese. Uh, I can, it was last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but the thing is, I too had the stinking thinking correct yeah, in. Yep. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this was the exact voice. God, you were doing so well. Uh, Catherine this... Boomer just quickly says, are we not lucky to only worry about overeating? That's not all we worry about. No, we, we worry about No, lot. no, no, that's not all we worry about. And honestly. this is more about, I think that... I think that when we're stressed about all sorts of things, we target food and what we're eating and body issues. And often it's about a whole load of other stuff. And it's not just about the food. And it's not, you know, the world is a really precarious place. A lot of my stinking thinking around body image and stuff this weekend was actually because I, everything feels very vulnerable at the moment. I've got some friends that are going through some really heavy shit that leaves me feeling really upset for them and powerless. Um... I, I'm, I'm really worried about so much that's going on in the world and what's coming and we just keep hearing how it's, everything's going to get worse. And so it creates this feeling, this general anxiety. And I think that we can just, sometimes we can just put it into something that, that isn't actually related, whether it's going into body loathing or overeating or over worrying about our kids. Or, and we're just transferring the anxiety, but it's just anxiety and it's where it goes to. And I think... Don't you think it's it's a familiar place to settle upon having a go at yourself for the way you eat or the way you look. I mean, a lot of people here are saying, and Dina often says it when she comes over, she says, oh, come on, don't, don't, I, I, a number of you are just saying, oh, you know, just now and then, just for, forget it. Don't, don't beat yourself up about it. But then there's a fine line, isn't there, between, and it's in beating yourself up about it at some point that you put the brakes on and you don't go spiralling into mm. total chaos. Total, total chaos with food because and that for me is is the frustration is that I know that it would take I could unravel everything I've achieved in terms of fitness and food in three days and by the same extension when people often say to me what would happen if you started drinking again I would Tim you probably agree with this I would unravel pretty quickly and that's because food, like alcohol or drugs or anything, is used as a way of medicating how you're feeling. So, so yes, I totally... So I many mean, good comments. We're going to read your comments. I, so I had my... Well, how I thought myself out of it, because I've learned all this stuff. I went to go to self-loathing about overeating this weekend, and then I just brought it all down. I went, it's nothing. Because in the big scheme of things... Come Monday or Tuesday, you'll be back to doing steps, you'll be back to eating moderately healthy, not all the time. 
And you have to just trust yourself with that. Because when you go, I can't, it's all just shit now and I'm just going to be terrible. That's the road to demise. I love yeah. it. It's just, just get back on the horse. Yeah, but you just say that, on. but the, the worry, uh, the worry is that you won't get back on the horse or how difficult it is to get back on the yeah. horse. Um, and and I, yeah, you've and got you don't to, want to just stop binging. And also, horse. because it's tomorrow that you're going to get back on the horse, you're, there's no guarantee you are well, going to get back I'm on the horse. I'm a great believer I'm going to read some of your comments in not saying tomorrow because yesterday, um, you know, I could have easily, because I had eaten in a way that, I, you know, I, I wasn't happy with myself. I was having a go at myself. And I was just like, well, I'm just going to just get back on how I like to eat. Mm. So I'm not going to have an ice cream. I'm not going to have this. I'm not going to have... I'm just going to stop. I'm not going to wait till Monday. I'm not going to wait till a week. It's fine. It's a weekend. You've been stressed. You've overeaten a bit and under-exercised. It's fine. You've got to literally say that to yourself. I know it's not easy, but that's what you have to say. And then you move on. Stanley says, what would Halle Berry say? Um, <laughs> Pink, Pink Lady she says... Go, you were so bad. You could have had a beautiful body. <laughs> just want to read some of your comments out because there's some really good ones here. Um, Pink Lady, progress isn't constant and that's okay. It's exactly. not supposed to be. Life is beautiful and hard. That's how you know you're alive. Jane Bentley, food is escapism, but it's not always the best way to escape. Exactly. Happy Juice Girl, the head voice can be a dangerous thing it's 99% mindset isn't it get that sorted and it becomes much easier I've lost six stones so far wow Mandy Cowling I had a pasty and bun on Saturday and same again on Sunday they didn't have tea either night to counteract that that's up. what I do now I that, do that it's like a game thank of bingo you, Mandy. isn't it thank you Mandy that is where we all go wrong so yeah. I started thinking about that today oh so Monday I'll just do like juice all day and I just literally what the fuck yeah that you know that that's a load of old bollocks just get back to eating normally the body really does adjust now if you take everything off and like you like you is your fear you binge for weeks on end then that is all that is awful emotionally because you it's so hard to get out of it but it's not the end of the world you can get back out of it again and i think it, it tends to be catastrophic for you doesn't it mm. i can see it in your face i can see you just like hating yourself and i know that's going to lead to you doing more being yeah being worse and like it's in it's good that you said that you went off and you like secretly mm. had chocolate because as you say who's it secret from me yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you know so it didn't work yeah, yeah, yeah exactly uh yeah it's um it, it it's difficult um jordan stevenson i agree nadia it's definitely not about the food controlling food makes us feel in control more at ease um, agree it's... a million percent, Nadia. Gemma H, there's nothing wrong with the amount of steps you've done. It's still good and your body needs rest too. It, well, j thank you for hurt, saying that. My left hurts so much, but I'm telling myself I have to do over 10,000 steps today, though I shouldn't. No, just don't, then rest. This is what I said to Mark. So what Mark does is you give him, you give him like a target. He will always have to overachieve, right? And I know what's coming because I know that he's going to get, it's too much. You can't keep that level up, so you have to bring it back down. So just go back today to doing 10,000 steps a day. Claire you get H competitive with yourself. Yeah, I do. And, and I try to do more and more and more, and then I end up dying. <laughs> Claire H, definitely take a look at food in the context of ADD, ADHD. There's some good info out there. You might need different tools. That's interesting. Oh, that yeah. is interesting. Uh, Zoe, sorry, I saw your comment about alcohol, Zoe. Uh, you, I think you've not drunk this weekend. It's hard when you're in such a negative mindset. I find it gets so, I find I get so deep into it and find it hard to get out of it sometimes. And alcohol never helps that. It just never, yeah. ever. Just say to yourself, it will only be worse. Yeah. It will only be worse if I drink. JJ, it I, will. It's I, fact. JJ, I remember in the 80s, very few of my friends' family were overweight. It really is takeaways, convenience yeah. food, portions. Of, and let's not beat around it the bush. Really this is. week, we're kind of all charging towards another reason to just stuff our faces, which is the Platinum Jubilee, aren't we? Massive cakes and, and everything. There's just, there's no end of commercial incentive to consume massive amounts of food, mm. is there? I mean, it's the biggest industry on the planet and there ain't enough of it to go round. I mean, it's, 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 it's something very weird about it all. I, I, I'm a great believer in getting back to eating when you're hungry, you know, and yeah. just, I mean, we both do the 16-8 because that works for us. But it might not work for others. Well, I certainly I don't say everyone should do it. But you've got to find your way. And going on a diet that you one day come off doesn't fucking work. No. 
No. Because when you come off it, you've still got the same stinking thinking and yeah. the overeating and all of that. I haven't been drinking enough water either. Water is a huge... But I'm, I'm, I've become the biggest water drinker in the house and I, I've neglected it for days. So basically, you've just neglected... You've just... You were doing really well and then you set yourself this incredible bar of perfection and then it collapses. Just go for being kind of all right. Good enough. Good enough. Yeah. That's what they say in CBT. That's what I do. I, I always just remember go, my CBT therapist would say, have you ever thought of just being like, good like enough? If sometimes I don't get 10,000, I'll just think, mm, well, as long as I've got 70 over the week or 65 over the week, yeah. then that's yeah. okay. Just I want you to, to inhabit that yeah. today. Melody Bell. Poor people won't be eating cakes. Yep, there was absolutely no, in, there was no inference there about, about haves and have nots in what I was saying. So I apologise if that came across like that. Uh, Christos, give yourself some credit. You're doing so much for the community here. Oh, bless you, Christos, for which we are so thankful. It's very easy to lean, lean to the burnout. We have all been all are there. Yeah. Bless you. Uh, big hugs. I think, um, I think you know, just just f try and... This is my big rule. Hi, Outlandish Creations. Around, hi, so, Outlandish yeah. Creations. Nice to see you around food or... But it is just... We say it all the time, isn't it? Try and be as kind to yourself as you are to the person that you love most in the world. Uh, that that's anything that you that you would never dream of, like anything you would never dream of saying to me about the way I eat or, or my body or the way it looks. Just don't say it to yourself. Well, it's like be you that say, kind to yeah, yourself. Yeah. It's like you say the best one is what you wouldn't say to your kids because sometimes in a row we say horrible things to each yeah, other. Yeah, but we don't never we? attack each other no. physically. No, 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 never we said a nasty thing. No, no, that's thing. true. Never. No, true. But just going back to this idea that there's a sort of element or aspect of frippery around talking about food, um, I, I would go so far as to say park alcohol, drugs, many other addictions to the side. I'd say food is a fundamental... We, as a, as a race we have food issues and eating issues. And I think it's the first place, it's the first place and often the last place that mental health issues, crises and blips and profound problems raise their head, raise their ugly head because it happens around food. We have to habitually eat food and any chaos in our head, our heart, our spirit or whatever is reflected in that food. And so control issues often come around food. Control in so many ways. You know, food is a is not just a metaphor, but it's a literal manifestation of everything. And yes, there, there aren't those issues for people who are struggling to feed themselves. Um, but think about that. They're struggling to feed themselves, so they're, they're, they're undergoing and experiencing the most extreme forms of mental health crisis mm. due to the lack of it and all the stresses that come from that. So I would disagree. I'd, I'd say that food for many is an indulgence, absolutely. Uh, uh, but for everyone, it is a potential source of utter distress yeah, and unhappiness. It really is. It's a huge, it really is. huge thing. Um, Faith, please could you cook some healthy snacks for all our subs? You know, you know what I think, Faith? Totally agree, Ashley J. I don't really believe in snacks. I think snacks are because you haven't eaten enough at your meal. And actually, there's a lot of research on the fact that, that around obesity, the, you know, the increasing problem with obesity in the Western world is because of the snacking culture. And if you go to um, cultures where snacking isn't a thing, like in France, like in Italy, they just don't have the same weight issues that we do. Snacking, you shouldn't really be hungry between meals and actually your body needs that rest. We've got into this way of thinking that we're just supposed to eat all the way through the day and it's not good. Every time we eat, our blood sugar rises, inflammation and, it, and it's not good for the body. That's why in countries where they eat and they immediately go for a walk, again, great health. It's the Italians, isn't it, that live the longest. Mediterranean yeah. way of eating, where you eat really nutritionally dense meals, quite fairly big meals, and then you don't eat anything until your next meal. Yeah. Um, and, the, and obviously, because the weather is better, people go for a walk, which brings down your insulin. So I'm not a believer in snacks. I think if you're snacking, you need to think about if you're eating enough and you're actual... Happy Juice yeah. Girl says, trouble is fresh food can cost more than processed rubbish, which feeds the vicious cycle. 
Well, no, I don't agree. Mind processed you. food is much more expensive. Processed food, if you buy... But if you want to buy nice veg and fruit and veg, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg rather than, for most families, a, a, a cheeseburger from, from McDonald's. Right, a cheeseburger, obviously, if you're eating from yeah, McDonald's. I, mean, I, I think, think, that's, I think those food, are the stark choices that I are think made out. Processed food from a, a, from a, a shop. A lot of um, supermarkets now are doing massively reduced fruit and veg. Now, obviously, things, there's certain, like, fruits good, that we yeah, shouldn't really be eating that are coming from a long way away. But if you stick to things like English apples and pears, carrots, turnips, cabbage, all of that stuff is really affordable and you can make a really big meal out of it. Things like beans and grains, much better protein than meat that is, is, is expensive, better for the planet, cheap. And if you buy dried beans and you soak them, mm. I need to do in a whole yeah. series of recipes on really affordable food. Mm. Processed food is an absolute rip-off. Mm. A packet of fish fingers costs actually a fortune, mm. pound for pound for the fish when you put, you know, what you pay for. Do you think for. part of it is also a that we're, we're a, a bit, we're sauce, all spoiled as well? A pasta sauce that you buy in a jar, very mm. expensive compared to if you, you know, just use tin tomatoes. You can get really cheap tin tomatoes, a bit of garlic, a bit of olive oil. You can make a sauce in 15 minutes and it will be way cheaper. I'm just mindful of time. Um, Try. Jealousy. We went off on one. Jealousy then. and Johnny Depp. Um, I, I personally think that the Johnny Depp trial has flagged up a huge spotlight. Obviously, there's the domestic violence topic. And it sounds weird that I'm about to say, I think you should park that to the side for one instant, because I think this is an exceptional Not case. Not fresh tomatoes. This is an ex tinned. I think this is an exceptional case. And I think it is about whose word you believe more than someone else's. And I genuinely don't think anything, any attitude to domestic abuse victims, whether male or female, should be uh, sort of, you know, threaded away from this or into, you know we shouldn't we shouldn't use this trial as, as some kind of way of rethinking anything around that i think you know it, 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 you know you've just got to be careful with that i think it is an exceptional case and it is about belief and it's about trust though obviously uh, both sides in the case have sought to make it about um you know uh, the, the the broader picture of domestic violence but without hard evidence it's very hard to kind of go that route but one of the things that i think is really interesting that has come up out of the whole Johnny Depp thing is the topic of jealousy and controlling behaviour and coercive control. Because one of the things you can't, you cannot not say about Johnny Depp is that he had major issues with um, with Amber and her relationship with other men and things like that. And so he was, an, you know, a self declared very jealous person. Um, and I think the weird thing about jealousy is this is just my personal take on the on the Amber uh, on the Amber Heard um, Johnny Depp trial. I think you can be a jealous person, but what happened? Why is it always the jealous person that gets shot down in flames when there are often people who manipulate jealousy? And what I mean by that is I I feel there are many occasions in the in the Depp Heard trial where I could well imagine that we don't know for sure that she will have sensed his jealousy and perhaps enjoyed the kind of results of it by aggravating it. I think that, that I think that those I think the games within a relationship if you're not talking about just plain evil person yeah, played on I, his insecurities I, if you're not talking about just a plain evil yeah. person if you just if you just imagine that this is a couple you know people that have got together and especially when they're a bit younger and and there's that frisson of excitement somebody really like yeah. oh are you talking to somebody yeah and and that, that can be quite intoxicating can't it yeah and then that can become just asking a poll and then that can become it can turn into something yeah quite gradually right and then that's yeah. how toxicity there's like a bed of toxicity then yeah and then people can get into that game of playing jealous both women and men can do yeah. that to each other, um, trying to make somebody jealous and then being really angry with them when they get jealous. Yeah. And also and there's the real complication, and I think we've talked about this in one of our How to Stay Marriage, where, you know, in any relationship, there's give and take at the beginning, isn't there? And you might give a little bit around someone's sort of jealousy around something, thinking, okay, I kind of understand that and it's not an evil, it's not an evil person. But by giving a little bit, the jealous person encroaches a little bit further the next time and feels that it's their right to know a little bit more. So you can see how 
there, there's, there's a route where jealousy can become controlling and controlling can become mm. coercive and coercive, mm. you know. So, you know, him, for example, I, I think he did try, I think he did have an issue, perhaps because of his age, uh, his sort of fading star, around a fear that she was perhaps going to become a, a, you know, a huge starlet and what have you. He obviously had issues, massive issues around James Franco. You know, if he has issues around James Franco and he's jealous and he doesn't want her to work with him, at what point does that become coercive control and some form of, you know, intimate partner violence in a sense? Uh, and what part of that is just him feeling insecure? Well, we can't know <clears throat> about that relationship, but I think that... Um Jealousy, the loveliest person can behave in the most despicable way when jealousy is at play, right. I think. Yeah. I think it's poisonous. I think it's agonising to be jealous or to watch, or, or in fact to be the victim of somebody else's jealousy. It's agony. Yeah. It's just horrendous. Yeah. But there's something highly addictive around jealous feelings because... There's also a huge adrenaline and cortisol rush. Mm. And people confuse that with a passion yeah. and with real feelings. Yeah, but, good point. But it's, it's so dark. Yeah. And I think there's quite a few people saying that I'm a jealous person. I would suggest that you don't label yourself in that way. I really would suggest that you don't label yourself in that way because it's a terrible label to give yourself because you're kind of locking yourself into this dis-ease the disease of jealousy is so awful. And sometimes, if you are somebody that is vulnerable to feeling jealous because maybe you haven't been brought up with love and security and you're, you know, you're always fearing that somebody's going to leave you, I think start being kinder to yourself about that and trying to unravel where that jealousy might come from. Because that's how Mark and I have worked on mm. your jealousy. Mm. It's like, it was really tough. It was really, really tough for both of us for a while, because Mark's jealousy overran our relationship. I couldn't see him because all I could see was the jealousy and it made me feel not loved, but actually, because it, yeah. it's not, it's not like a feeling of love at yeah. all. Yeah. And so we just worked on working out, where does it come from? I understand where it comes from from yeah. him. Yeah. And I think rather than calling yourself a jealous person, have a look into that and then be really, really careful about who you go out with because we are inextricably drawn often to the people that are going to feed the very worst in us so somebody that actually quite gets a kick out of somebody being jealous will subconsciously be drawn to the jealous person yeah. and when mark was in rehab i had such a good conversation with one of his counselors about this and he said within minutes of you and Mark knowing each other, there would have been just tiniest details that you would have just subconsciously given each other on what sort of person, yeah, yeah. what sort of people you were. And that works. And if you label yourself as a jealous person and you say that, say you're on a first date and you say, oh, well, I'm a very jealous person, I think you leave yourself wide open. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and but... I, think you think, I think a better way to think about it is if you are... I mean, some people are paranoid jealous. And that's like very, very difficult, but it, you know, because they, you need help. That, that's a different thing. But if you have been told over and over again by somebody that's played games with you that you're a jealous person and somebody went up there and said, oh, my partner used to do jealous things all the time, yeah. do things to make me jealous. So when I say they were, I was jealous, I was ah, you see, you are a jealous person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be careful of sticking yeah, that Yeah, because you can gaslight people. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, we've had yeah. some sort of, we were talking about this about something else this weekend. If people, you can do nothing about the label that someone else wants to apply to you so that they can live happily around you. So, for example, if it serves you to describe someone as jealous, because then it means you can carry on doing your thing, or it serves you to say that someone is angry because actually that serves your, your self-justification of how you're dealing with that person. You know, you can't escape labels. I think it's a really key point that you say there about jealousy. You know, we, labels are attached to people. Oh, you're really the jealous type. Or oh, you're, you're, yeah, you're actually quite jealous. I think it's really My damaging. My crazy jealous ex. It's really damaging you know, to kind of just use that language. But yeah. as Sarah Witherington says, my ex-husband was jealous. Then came the manipulation, control, then the violence. I left my marriage as he was all that, that toxic poison he did to me. Watching the trial brings back some of my nightmares, mm, Sarah. I'm sure, uh, you know... It's a red flag. 
It's if somebody's showing reference. you jealousy right mm. at the beginning of a relationship, but and and unless somebody is willing to get help and willing to have a discussion with you about their jealous behaviour, it's very very it's going to be mm. very very difficult. And you know we've we've spoken about this before, but with Mark it was like you know Mark wanted to change it. Mm. If you're with somebody that just totally just believes that everything they're saying about you is right. Oh, it's very hot. What was that? I don't know. I saw that. Uh, but, it's very I, hard but I tell to you fix. what really helped. We did talk about this elsewhere. I don't know. I can't remember where. As soon as I turned the, and I have to work on it all the time, like one does with addiction. As soon as I replaced the alcohol concept, my addiction to alcohol, with jealousy, and saw it as an addiction, and I don't think that's something that's wow. talked about an awful lot. It you is know, an addiction. As soon as you see it as an addiction, and then you try to unpack the actions within jealousy mm. that make you feel worse you can then you then have a, a sort of fighting chance to sort of knock into the long grass or work on those trigger points and the little aspects that make the jealousy worse because you, what you'll find with jealousy is all those things that you think makes your jealousy worse you're going in search of you are bringing them to you to mm. activate the looking addiction on somebody's and, get the hit phone, and all that kind of stuff looking on a phone you know, trying to hear another conversation. It, it was my, it was my sister and I were saying the other day actually, Dina, because I've never ever looked on anyone's phone. And I said, you know, we're so blessed with that because people that are caught in that cycle, it is fucking hell on earth yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, you can look on somebody's phone; it could be something completely innocuous. But if you're in that place, suspicious, you can yeah. read whatever you want. Yeah. You can read into what and find whatever you're looking for. Yeah. And it is about, Ellie was there, was saying, oh, was it Ellie, Ellie saying? Ellie Rose, I battle really with jealousy. Yeah, yeah. Read that one. I battle with jealousy so, so much. I know my behaviors and understand where it comes from, but it's a conscious effort most days to overcome it. You know, I'm gonna say something quite radical here. Say it. I think if you're a young person and you're looking for a relationship and you know you really struggle with jealousy, I would say really find a way of working on that before you get into a relationship. If you know you're out of control with jealous feelings, just try and work on that. There's really good books on there. There's really good on this. Um, and just, I, I think it, at, at some point is a kind of cold turkey. You had to cold turkey, Absolutely. didn't you? Absolutely, it really it, is. It was exactly like coming All the off analogies of an, ad, of an, ad, ad, of an addiction, just, just, just But I will it. not try it. It does help, it will help. If you try and treat it in that way, it will help yeah. because you can kind of cold turkey certain behaviours that you yourself demonstrate. Reese, uh, jealousy I think can be rife when it's derived from a lack of self-esteem, but also in a relationship, pouring all your happiness onto your partner as opposed to coming together as separate and healed. And if you think about it, so many of us get together with people in the most unhealed fashion possible, which is usually after countless drink, you know, drinks of alcohol and complete carnage and chaos. I mean, and it's a serious point. I think this dry dating thing you, is Gemma. a really important development, dry dating, because uh, this is we because about I this think so it's many huge. of the problems around, you know, domestic violence, jealousy, control issues, infidelity, all the shit that happens in relationship, not all of it, but obviously a lot of it, happens because at the point of inception of the relationship, relationship it's done in such a rocky kind of chaotic and, and fashion you, and you miss those red flags yeah, you're right, zoe, 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 zoe just said there that one of her a date she went on on the first date the guy got jealous with her for talking to the waiter now imagine if you're a bit too pissed to notice that you of course you are never going to go on a second date with somebody that shows you jealousy on a first date yeah. talking that person is going to be so fucking dangerous i mean i can't tell you if somebody look, does something jealous on your first date, in my opinion, what I would do, obviously I'm not a counsellor or I'm not anything, this is just my advice, if you were my child, would be get the fuck out of there, get a cab, get out there as far as you yeah. can. And somebody, we talked about this a while back, a while back, somebody in Lucerne, I can't remember who it was, had a really good bit of advice and it was, when you go out with somebody on a date, disagree with them. No. That's a good point. Just disagree with them on yeah. something. Yeah, who said that? I remember saying that. It was, saying that. Such it was a really a good, good idea. Tip. Mm. And just see how that person responds. Now, if you're pissed, you're not going to be able to see that. You're not going to be able to see those, those red flags. 
somebody just said there, I was looking on my husband's phone and I found he was a member of a dating site. This is another problem, isn't it? If you've been hurt... Well, if you've been jealous... If you've been cheated on, it's very hard to... what to Because to, you're trying to protect well, yourself. Yeah, no, and I just want to ask, it's directly related to what you're saying. If you're a jealous person, you overcome your jealousy, you work on it, you're in a relationship, and you discover that your jealousy had purpose because the person's been unfaithful, right? How do you build yourself back up in any new relationship? It's very hard. That's but good. I would say often we don't give ourselves time enough to heal. And the thing is, as I always say, when you break up with somebody, even if they've been the biggest shit on the planet, sit down and write down where you were culpable. Yeah. Now, that could be I allowed one red flag after another to go or mm. I was also really argumentative and da, 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 and sit down and write that list out yeah. and then try and work on some of that shit before you go into another relationship. And it's a really good idea to, to look over it and go, come on, what if I'm honest with myself, what were the red flags that I, that I dismissed? Mm. Because they're always there. They're always there. We choose not to see them. And if we choose not to ruminate on them after we've broken up our relationship, guess what? Yeah. You're going to choose the same person again with a different name because that's what we do. We choose the same person over and over again with a different name, trying to work out the same shit. And the trouble is we can't work out the shit because we didn't really have a good look at what the shit was. Exactly. Shauna <laughs> Roche. Early in relationships, people love a bit of jealousy. Seems like part of the chase. But then as the relationship progresses, it becomes more aggressive and insecure. You Not the always. And the that's the head. problem. But often. That, I mean, that often is a narrative. That is, that, that, that is what happens. So... Mm. You might have done that in a previous relationship, knowing it's all going to settle down, but it's a bit of frisson on to the beginning, but you're always playing a dangerous game. Yeah. Always playing a dangerous game. If you purposefully make somebody jealous, it's dangerous. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think you had a bit of both of those things in, in the Johnny. And someone just asked, will the drugs have aggravated things for Johnny? Absolutely. absolutely. It'll have been a paranoid wreck. Absolutely. Drugs will make you totally paranoid. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So happy birthday to happy Bernie. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy Bernie. Happy birthday to you. Right, we mangle your name. Some of you I know have come back. You've renewed your membership. So Petunia will give you a welcome. Destroy Petunia's name. Petunia. Petunia. Oh, pain in my head. Petunia, welcome to... The family gets oh, it's awful, terrier. isn't it? It just goes everywhere, but in a nice way. Isn't it's supposed to be. No, it's supposed to be. Keely, 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 if you want to join the family guest area, guys, we keep it really cheap. We keep it thirty-seven pence a week. So that it's totally affordable. You're getting another live No and Name Sunday show this Sunday. We also have made the promise that we will never increase that price in that in in Welcome that in the family area. So it's one ninety nine, and you get extra content. Lucy Shad Bolt, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy Shad Bolt, Shooty 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 Shad Bolt, Shooty 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 Shad Bolt, Lucy Shad Bolt, Lucy Shad Bolt. And one of the things we tend to do is just destroy your names. Um, Heather, Heather Gunn. Is this a welcome? You're welcome. Welcome, Heather Gun. Welcome, Heather, Heather, Heather Gun. It's called scatting, that isn't welcome, it? Welcome, Heather Gun. Is it called scatting or is scatting <laughs> taking a shit? I don't know. Sorry if I destroyed that. Guys, have a really lovely oh, day. Oh, yes, great topics. Can we one day do about attachment when you are still loving someone who doesn't love you as oh, much as dear. you do them? Unrequited. That yeah. is so damn painful, yeah. and that yeah. takes some. Serious cold turkey. Yeah, we should talk about Serious. that. Serious. We'll do that a as a topic. topic. Um, guys, have a lovely day. Enjoy half term if you're on half term. Um, uh, a vlog is forthcoming. We're just waiting for it to come out of the edit system. Lots of love. Bye.